general principles of orthopedic trauma. This is for the Lewis Katz School of Medicine Physician Assistant Program. I'm Saki Brahman. These are my um, financial and uh, related uh, disclosures and um, some of the uh, images were borrowed from the AO Foundation. So these are the lecture objectives. Uh, number one, to understand the assessment and basic management of fractures, to understand why some fractures do not heal, uh, to understand the complications and associated injuries that present with fractures, and to understand uh, some very basic principles of uh, pediatric fractures and how they differ. So what is orthopedic trauma? Well, it's uh, a field that uh, deals with the management of fractures and related injuries. Um, it often deals with hospitalized patients, perhaps a little more so than um, some of the other orthopedic disciplines. It includes uh, operative and non-operative care uh, to help patients return to function after injury. So these are some of the topics uh, I'd like you to know um, after this lecture and our, uh, and our um, live session. Uh, extremity and pelvic fractures, associated neurovascular injury, uh, pathologic fractures, osteoporosis, fracture non-unions, splinting and casting principles, and this will be reinforced in a workshop, and basic surgical fixation principles, just real basic simple stuff. Now there are some related topics that will be covered separately, uh, namely uh, compartment syndrome, open fractures, dislocations, essentially uh, these will be uh, in the emergencies. All right, this will be in the emergencies lecture, and then Dr. Haydell is going to cover this uh, topic of musculoskeletal infection in a separate lecture as well. So, well, first, this is kind of going to be our outline um, for this first se uh, section of this. Very basic anatomy and terminology. Uh, we'll go through mechanisms um, in a little bit of detail and uh, evaluation and then some basic uh, management and treatment. We'll probably get into that in the next video. So basic anatomy and terminology. Uh, and, and this is perhaps going back to uh, gross anatomy and some definitions. Um, perhaps covered in, in, in the radiology uh, session of this block, uh, but uh, let's just get through some basic definitions to reinforce this. So um, understand proximal and distal with regard to the anatomy, proximal being closer to the center of the body and distal the opposite. With regard to bone, we're going to talk a lot about cancellous versus cortical bone. We'll get into that in the next few slides. You should understand the diaphysis as the shaft of the bone and it has a medullary canal. The metaphysis is uh, sort of the trabecular end here, and then you have the epiphysis uh, with the distal and proximal ends of the bone, which are the articulating or articular portions of the bone. That you know, here it's going to be your your knee joint, and up here is going to be your hip uh, your hip joint in this femur. So a few notes about bone structure. So um, there's essentially, the easiest way to break it down is cortical bone and cancellous bone. So cortical bone is your compact bone. Uh, it represents 80% uh, of the skeleton by, by weight. It has a very high compressive uh, bending and rotational strength with a relatively slow turnover of bone. So, for instance, if you have a fracture of the cortical bone, it takes a little bit longer relative to cancellous bone. So cancellous bone is your so-called spongy bone. Uh, by weight, it's 20% of the skeleton. It's less dense and strong and has a high turnover rate. So when you have a fracture through cancellous bone, it typically can heal much faster. Uh, and here you can kind of see, um, here's an example of a, of a tibia in this, uh, in this image here and they're trying to show you a cross-section here at the metaphyseal uh, level where you have this cancellous bone with a um, somewhat uh, uh, thin cortex and then a periosteum which is sort of the outer layer of uh, the bone which has um, 
blood supply and uh, uh, aids in healing and also in, in young children can be very thick and uh, protects the bone mechanically to some degree. Um, inside the bone you have the uh, uh, bone marrow so you can see the cortical bone, the end osteal surface and then uh, the bone marrow. Here you can see an example of the periosteum being a tissue layer li literally being kind of opened up and peeled away which potentially can be done surgically uh, if needed. Okay, and here you see some of their just uh, basic descriptions, epiphysis, metaphysis, diaphysis, the medullary canal, and then the opposite at the other end. So if you were to look under a uh, microscope and of course with some color aids here, uh, you can see that cortical bone is very dense, tightly packed osteons, uh, whereas cancellous bone is a more loose meshwork of uh, trabecula. So some other definitions. This is something you'll hear a lot of patients ask. Um, well, is it fractured or is it broken? And the fact is, at least in, as far as medical terminology goes, it's the same thing. So uh, we use the terms interchangeably. Um, fracture is the same as being broken. It's defined by a disruption of that bone cortex um, and it can occur in any type of bone uh, or any part of the bone and essentially results in pain, loss of related function, so of course uh, it makes it difficult to move, uh, needless to say, uh, and it cannot provide its structural support. Um, for the body to stand up or to weight bear, load, uh, use the limb, uh, fight against gravity, etc. Um, that's why the bone is there. It's an insertion point for the muscles, for instance, and that's mechanically unstable when you're fractured. So, by mechanism, fractures occur due to a mechanical failure of bone under stress. All right, now this can occur. Uh, um, sort of you know, biomechanically uh, by multiple mechanisms. It could be axial loading. Uh, bone tends to be fairly strong under compression, but with enough compression you can get a fracture. Uh, rotation and torsion. Uh, bending, and when you have a bending you potentially have, uh, so for instance here, you may have uh, bending where uh, the bone is uh, perhaps, uh, let's just say, hit from here there's sort of a bending this way and this way. So the fracture first occurs here under a tension or bending and then uh, with compression on the opposite side then uh, failure occurs out this way. Okay. Uh, you can also have a missile injury and, and uh, this could be from like a gunshot uh, most typically or some other uh, high energy uh, missile uh, penetrating trauma. So here's uh, an image from the textbook uh, again showing um, the uh, mechanism. So uh, very simple again showing a, a femur. Um, so if this femur were to be loaded let's say so if you had uh, this person fall from a height land on their feet and the uh, forces directed this way, um, there's going to potentially be this tension occurring uh, on this lateral cortex, right? And then you're going to get this compression on the medial cortex here, and then that's going to lead, just like I tried to draw in the last image, uh, to a failure of the bone right here under tension, failure under tension, and uh, in this case, uh, the compressive forces are not enough to, to, to cause any additional fracture like you saw that in that other image that fracture lines coming out this way here you just have a complete uh, um, uh, fracture line that comes across uh, the transverse fracture of the femur. So some other terms um, to keep in mind uh, regarding fracture displacement um, a fracture can be non-displaced, in which it's basically what a patient may call a hairline fracture. It could be displaced, which just basically means the fractures are no longer in their usual alignment. It can be angulated, um, as shown here. Uh, there's also a term called bayonet. Um, 
meant to uh, sort of uh, invoke the image of um, a bayonet on a rifle, for instance, in which you have sort of this, uh, the two fragments overriding each other um, with slight shortening, or you can have distraction. Distraction essentially means there's a, a large gap uh, because of um, uh, the, you know, the, either the pawns being pulled apart or, or perhaps with bone loss you may use the same um, terminology but then essentially when there's a large gap um, that can be called distracted so this is a little bit of a busy slide um, but uh, you want to take a look at this you may want to pause the video and sort of make sure you understand this you'll be hearing these terms um, in this lecture and possibly in the next, next several lectures as uh, some of the lecturers uh, may, may bring up a case with a fracture and use some terminology. So I've already used this already. So a transverse fracture means that the fracture is perpendicular to the shaft of the bone. It comes transversely across. Com um, comminuted uh, basically means that there's multiple fragments. Uh, oblique means that there's an angulated fracture line. Uh, in an oblique fashion. Um, and I, I'm going to go in a little bit of a different order here. Um, a spiral fracture is really when you have a, uh, it's kind of like oblique, uh, except it tends to spiral around a little bit more, uh, and typically from a rotational injury. Uh, and then a segmental fracture um, shown here is a fracture where you have uh, essentially a segment or there's two fracture lines with a floating fragment in the middle so that's a prototypical segmental fracture there um, now an intraarticular fracture is shown here intraarticular fracture essentially means that the fracture goes into the joint so in this case this is an intraarticular fracture of the medial femoral condyle going into the knee joint okay um, so now I'm going to actually drop down here. Uh, we'll talk about impaction. So impaction fracture essentially, um, this is a term used uh, to describe fractures typically that occur in the metaphyseal region, uh, where the bone is again a little more, a little bit more spongy, uh, or the epiphyseal region, and the fracture kind of uh, collapses under. It sort of, uh, in, you know, collapses or shortens uh, and impacts into itself, uh, similar to a compression fracture, except the term compression fracture is used uh, almost exclusively in uh, spinal vertebrae, uh, vertebral bodies, uh, as a essentially type of impaction. Um, a depressed fracture or fracture depression is a term used uh, specifically um, for articular fragments. So up here you saw an intraarticular fracture that really was just a clean fracture line coming down you could say. Whereas here, and, I, and, and the image is small so you may have to stop, pause, zoom, whatever to get a better look. But you can see in the tibia uh, medially, the proximal tibia, there is a depression. Um, perhaps you could say it's like an impaction but it, it, when it involves the, the, the articular surface and there's this so called, you know, kind of like step off, we call that a depression. All right. Um, then you can have a stress fracture. So a stress fracture essentially is a phenomenon that occurs when you either have normal bone that's been overloaded and stressed or you have abnormal bone uh, that uh, fails because it's weak essentially. You can have a stress fracture with no trauma. Um, uh, and, 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 you know, this is sort of very similar uh, phenomenon here. A pathologic fracture, and we'll talk about this in, a, in one of the other videos, is a fracture through bone weakened by tumor, okay? And then here's our, uh, our two pediatric fracture types. You can have a buccal fracture, and we'll get into this in the pediatric uh, portion of the lecture, or a green stick fracture, which is uh, sort of similar, but you actually have a, uh, tension failure on one side and the other side just does not snap, uh, so to speak. All right, so I'm going to pause there and uh, end this video, and we'll pick up with the rest in, uh, of the lecture in the next video. Thanks.